Security Now Illustrated by AskMrWizard.com Illustrating concepts, mechanisms, and algorithms from the amazing Security Now podcast by Steve Gibson and Leo Laporte. This is episode 29, Ethernet in Security. Segment A, Prerequisites, Introduction, and ARP Poisoning Theory. Security Now, Episode 29, Ethernet in Security. In Security Now, Episode 29, Steve revealed a fundamental weakness in the Ethernet local area network technology that forms the basis for almost all network intercommunications within homes, offices, and data centers. In order to understand Steve's revelation about this weakness, it's important that you understand the fundamentals of collision networks like Ethernet. It's also important that you understand the following details of Ethernet. You need to understand how Ethernet addresses and payloads are framed within an Ethernet frame. You need to know about old-style Ethernet segments and Ethernet hubs. You need to know about monitoring Ethernet traffic on a LAN segment using diagnostic tools like Wireshark. You need to know about Ethernet switches and about Ethernet broadcasts, including broadcasts on switched LANs. You need to know how an IP packet can be inserted inside an Ethernet frame for transport across a LAN segment. And you also need to understand that delivery of messages on a LAN is always dependent on MAC addresses, while delivery of messages on the Internet is always dependent on IP addresses, and how ARP, the Address Resolution Protocol, is used to help translate from one to the other when necessary. If you're already comfortable with all these concepts, then you're ready to continue with Steve's dialogue as contained in the, in the remainder of this clip and in the follow-on clips. If you aren't comfortable with these concepts, then you should watch the Ethernet Fundamentals clips from AskMrWizard.com that are referenced in video links that you're about to see here and in the follow-on clips or on the web page where they're all published in the Security Now section here at AskMrWizard.com. Beginners will be in pretty good shape if they just watch these four prerequisite video clips. 1. The Ethernet Tutorial for Beginners. 2. Ethernet Evolved. 3. Ethernet Switches. And 4. The Address Resolution Protocol, or ARP. You know, back when Ethernet switches first became available, many people who were aware that Ethernet diagnostic tools made it easy to monitor Ethernet traffic across an entire LAN segment felt that Ethernet switches increased privacy and security on LANs. Well, Steve is about to erase all of that comfort. Here's a hint about the devilishly delicious dialogue to follow. Just imagine all the confusion and trouble an attacker could cause if he had complete freedom to manipulate the little memory tables that modern operating systems use to translate back and forth between MAC addresses and IP addresses. We'll join and illustrate Steve's dialogue after he points out that computers and other network devices on a LAN can each have two independent network addresses. One of two, each computer gets a MAC or Ethernet address, and two of two, each computer gets an IP address. He then continues with his revelation of the way usurpers can attack Ethernet logic on a LAN in order to subvert Ethernet switches and the Ethernet routing logic within modern operating systems. To set the scene for Steve's dialogue, let's suppose that a disgruntled employee sitting at this laptop wants to intercept the email traffic of the employee sitting at this laptop. Note that the attacker is directly connected with the gateway router, but the router's Ethernet switch hardware normally segments the LAN, isolating him from his target. Note that the fact that the victim is using Wi-Fi doesn't matter at all in the attack that Steve will outline, because the attacker will try to intercept the traffic at the hardwired gateway device after the wireless access point converts Wi-Fi packets into Ethernet frames. What this means is that the computers on the LAN, in order to send IP data to each other, which is really what they want to do, they need to have a table that says this IP is assigned to the computer with this MAC address, and this IP, and another IP, is assigned to such and such computer. So there, there's a, a basically an, an association table that maps 
the IPs to the MAC addresses. What happens when a packet comes in from the gateway, say that it's, it's coming in off the internet and it's addressed to a certain IP, the, the gateway, the router or whatever it is that is the way the LAN connects to, to any other networks, it'll look at this destination IP and look to see if it knows what this, um, which MAC address is associated with that IP. If it, if it does already know because it sent some data to it in the past, it simply wraps that IP packet in an Ethernet packet and sticks it on the LAN addressed to its destination, that machine will hear it and accept the packet, take the Ethernet wrapping off, and there's the IP packet that, that it has been sent. If, however, the gateway doesn't know the address of the, that it had, doesn't have the MAC address associated with that IP address, it needs to, it needs to ask the entire network who has this IP. Well, that's where this, this thing called Address Resolution Protocol, ARP, com comes in. If you need help understanding the workings of ARP, be sure to watch our clip entitled ARP, the Address Resolution Protocol. Computers use ARP to build a table mapping IP addresses to MAC addresses. Well, you know, it's a very cool and slick technology, but it's got one real problem. And that is, there is absolutely no way to know if this ARP traffic is valid or if perhaps it's been spoofed. So imagine, to, just to, to reiterate how this works when it's working right, is that the, the, the gateway will send an ARP request, broadcast it to every machine asking who has this IP. Well, similarly, when any one of the machines on the network wants to send a packet outside of the LAN or even to another machine on the LAN, um, individual machines will also generate these ARP requests saying, who has this IP? The machine that does responds. The way, these, the, the way the Ethernet works is when receiving an ARP reply, the the receiving machine simply fills out this table entry in what's called the ARP table, not surprisingly, and, and, and puts the information in. It turns out that a malicious person anywhere on the LAN could send any other computer an ARP reply, and the computer would believe it was real and and change the entry in its ARP table, hmm. basically updating the entry with this new information. So there's no attempt what, to validate the sender at all. Well, there's no way to validate. I mean, it's literally there's there's just like no way. There's nothing you there's could just, ask. <laughs> there, yeah, exactly. There's no. This was never considered, right. never thought about back in the original design is, of of the net. It, so did they make the assumption that no one who has direct access to your land would be malicious or what there was no assumption they didn't I even mean, think this, about it it this, wasn't, this wasn't even that wasn't even on the radar we see that a lot consider... with security issues where, where just nobody even thought about it because nobody had done it or there were no exploits to that point well exactly exactly so 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 let me make this clear because this is really important if a malicious person sent a computer on the net an arp reply saying I am the IP of the gateway that would replace that entry the 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 entry for the for the lands gateway IP with the MAC address of the intruder from that moment on any traffic which the which that computer wanted to send out to the internet would be addressed to the MAC address of the intruder. So you've effectively so, stolen the connection. Yes, you have stolen the, the you, you have stolen the all the traffic that that is bound for the gateway. Now, Similarly, a, well, go ahead. I, I just thought okay, of a problem yeah. because if you're stealing it, <laughs> it's not going to get to the gateway. Well, exactly. So so part two is this same intruder then turns around and sends one ARP reply to the gateway uh. pretending pretending to be the IP 
of the other computer that it's that it's intercepting. It, that will re, that will replace the table entry in the gateway. So anything from the gateway bound for that for that other computer's IP will instead be sent to, to the MAC address. That, that is to say, to the computer that wants to intercept this. To in order to to keep the connection alive, the com, the interceptor has to forward any traffic it receives. On to the original right. MAC address, right. so it's basically it's spliced itself in, in in what we know is called a man in the middle attack. Makes sense. It's impersonating both ends, one to the other, yeah, and, and taking all the traffic. The original audio only version of this podcast can be found on the Gibson Research Corporation site at grc.com/securitynow. This clip illustrates some of the highlights from that show. This video clip comes from a large collection of related clips. All are indexed and easy to find at www.askmrwizard.com, along with related items, text articles, illustrations, and forums. Please visit us today. We appreciate your support. Thank you.